Good morning everybody, it's 9 o'clock and 9 o'clock is with Father Warner. We are in Saturday of the ninth week in Ordinary Time. We are recording from St. Stephen's Church in Kambala Hill. Our text today is taken from Mark chapter 12. If you open your Bible, Mark chapter 12, verse 38 to 44. And I have entitled today's teaching, Condemnation or Commendation. So let me read the text with you and for you. Please keep your Bibles open. As he thought, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes, robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses for the sake of appearances. They simply say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you this, this poor woman, this poor widow, has put in more money than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, perhaps what causes all the conflicts while reading this pericope is that in the Bible, this pericope is separated by a title. So you'll see the first part is Jesus denounces the scribes and then you'll have the widow's offering. So it kind of makes it seem like these are two pericopes rather than one, rather than uh, Matthew, Mark chapter 12 verse 38 to 44, it makes it seem like it's two. The Bible has verse 38 to 40 with the title, Jesus denounces the scribes and that is in the RSV translation, in your translation, it could be uh, something else, which when you read this, Jesus denounces the, the scribes, it amounts to a condemnation of them. And then you have verses 41 to 44, which are entitled the widow's offering. That is in my RSV version, it might be a little different in yours, which makes it a commendation. So the first was a condemnation and the second one is a commendation. So what really is this pericope all about? To better understand the point being made, we need to the, read this text in its larger context of Mark chapter 12, in which Jesus is having, as it were, a battle royale with the Jewish authorities and in particular with the um, scribes. Now, after having fended off, and we've seen this the whole week through, after having fended off the traps and the wily ways of the Jewish leaders, Jesus then went into attack mode. It's like he had enough of these guys and now he says, well, I have to set the record straight. Now, it would be a mistake to think that the point of this pericope is the charity of the widow. For Jesus was presenting the widow as a contrast. Please listen to this. He was presenting the widow as a contrast to the ostentatious and the hypocritical scribes who search for honor and search for prestige. Beneath the folds of their religious robes were hidden their desire and their lust for power and their lust for position. Couple this with their greed, which did not even spare the widows, as we are told in today's text, who were presented in antiquity as persons worthy of protection by the community. That's how widows should be treated then, now and always. The scribes who were interpreters of the religious law also, as we are told, provided legal services because of their learning. This dual role perhaps also created an impression in the minds of hapless widows who assumed that the, the services rendered would be therefore honest services on the part of the scribes. Why would an unsuspecting widow think less of a lawyer with a reputation for piety? 
But remember, wolves in sheep's clothing were the scribes. For many of them received their fee, and this is how they got their fee for their services they provided. They received their fee by appropriating a portion of the land owned by the widow, while some served as even trustees of the widow's estate. And it is no wonder that Jesus' accusation is so, 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 so blatantly clear. He says, they devour widows' houses and for their sake of appearances, they simply say long prayers. Say long prayers, people fall for it and then you then rope in the mullah, as it were. Thief from even widows, you spare nobody. Now the words of Jesus would have stung the scribes for Jesus exposes their hypocrisy right in the very temple. Remember all of this is happening in chapter 12 is happening in the temple of Jerusalem. And then, sitting opposite uh, the treasury, Jesus now contrasts and commends a widow who put in two small copper coins. Remember, first Jesus wants us to see the hypocrisy of those who were religious leaders, who should have been doing everything right, but who did everything wrong. And now, he gives us the example of the widow. Now, these two small copper coins, what were they? 64 such little coins would make a denarius. Remember, I told you that a denarius was equivalent to one day's wage. So, she puts in, we are told in scripture, all she had. You have to have 64 of these small copper coins to get. So, assuming, assuming uh, somebody had to earn 100 rupees, I mean, it must have been like she had 20 rupees or 10 rupees. That was all she had to live on. Now, unfortunately, and I say unfortunately, this unnamed widow has inadvertently been used by preachers and pastors who have misunderstood the real message of Jesus. For she was to be merely a contrast in the pericope to the conniving scribes and was not meant to be the subject of a homily on charity, which we have done quite liberally and then started telling our congregations now, Look, this widow has been so kind and given everything and what about you and why we are not getting enough of community welfare fund? This text is not to be misused for making a financial pitch in the parish. So this passage has become a classic case of missing the woods for the trees by many preachers. That's why I stressed it follows its condemnation followed by commendation. Perhaps even today, we are using and abusing the widow in inverted commas, the widow in, in single inverted commas, which would be using and abusing a lot of other people. The call of Jesus to his church and most certainly to us, his leaders, is for us to be authentic witnesses of Christian living. You see, while finances and administrative burdens weigh us down, uh, and I can tell you that taking over St. Stephen's, uh, it's been, it has its own share of challenges. Many of you have been asking me, Father, how are you coping? Transfers by itself are emotionally difficult. And then, of course, you come to a new place, much has to be uh, done, perhaps much has been done. And so it's, it's uh, tough. And these administrative bur uh, burdens really weigh us down. But while they weigh us down, we must be clear that it can never be used as a solution to our problems by driving guilt into our congregations to give charitably to the church. Even more, for the unimaginable thought of personal gain. So there's much that we can learn. Jesus today principally wants to teach us, show us. It's a compare and contrast. Look at the, look at the scribes who ought to have been more honest, who should have had integrity, who should have done the right thing. And then look at this widow with less than, with just two small tiny copper coins. She outbeats these religious leaders in her love for God. I also want to make uh, sometimes uh, a point because lay people misuse also these texts. Yeah, and say, Father, 
we have to be grateful for everything that comes in. Here's what I want to say and say very gently. If you have the capacity to give to your church, and many of you have been writing to me about tithes, you ought to. Now, I'm going to give this as a clarity because many of you have asked me this question over the last couple of days for several reasons. And this is concerning tithes. The whole concept of tithes came into the church. It's, it's, a, it's a biblical teaching because of the 12 tribes of Israel, the only tribe that did not get land was the Levites or the priestly tribe. So the other tribes compensated the priestly tribe by giving them 10% of um, the produce or whatever they had. This is where you get the word tithe, 10%. Um, today, many of the Pentecostal churches demand a tithe or they request for a tithe, whatever may be the case. Uh, but this is required because your church needs to be supported. Now many people ask me this, Father, can I give a donation to your ashram or to Lenny's foundation for the children or to whatever else you've been supporting and can I consider that donation as a tithe? And the answer is no. That's a donation. That's a charitable donation that you are making from your side. Your tithe is always to the church. Now, in the Archdiocese of Bombay, we do not insist on 10%, but we recommend 1%. Now, 1%, and I can tell you this quite confidently, after being a priest of 21 years, if even every earning member, and this goes also for those who are uh, retired, because you might get a pension, you get something, so there's always 1% of what you're getting. Um, earning doesn't mean that you have a job. It means that there is some income coming to, the, into, to you. If even everybody in the parish gave 1%, I can assure you, no parish in Bombay or any other part of the world will be in want. But this is the sad reality, that a large percent do not contribute at all. In uh, St. Jude's parish, and I know I'm taking a little time on this topic because of the questions that come to me. In St. Jude's parish, I had a simple policy which I will implement here too. I used to tell the parishioners, give me one percent of your income or give me one rupee but give me any one of the two and in return i will make sure that you are never in want that in your time of need the church will step up to the plate not only it's not only when you have to ask but when we come to know that you are in need and i think this is how a church should function uh, it's sad that today we wait for people to come to us uh, the church of pope francis as he keeps saying, how I wish for a poor church. And for a poor church, it doesn't mean uh, that the church looks like a slum. No, I don't think that's what the Holy Father means. It means how I wish that the church loved the poor, cared for the poor. And this, uh, even to the parishioners of St. Stephen who are watching, is something that I've said to you already on day one. If you are starving, if there's no food on your table, please come and join me for a meal yeah no one should stop not for a minute not for a second poverty is not something that we should glorify poverty is a social shame and a stigma upon any nation or any part of the world that allows its people to starve and for us who have more god expects us to share i hope that's a clarification I'm going to leave the comment section on for this uh, teaching so that if you have any more questions to answer or you can WhatsApp me on 98202-42151. I uh, want to thank in a special way uh, Mary Ann Porter for the breakfast that she sent and in Thanksgiving for many bless blessings received and the lunch offered by Amina Dias, um, which both these have been sent to the children of the Love Joy Hope Foundation. I want to tell you that as of this morning, uh, Nadia has taken her mother-in-law and the last amount of things her mother in -law, the, uh, Lenny's mother is bedridden so they have taken an, her in an ambulance and they've all headed off to Goa with this the entire children's home has now moved off to Goa I was supposed to be there and to help them to settle in but um, we are in COVID times and I'm still here but I will be going there shortly because I'd like to help to set up the home 
So thank you everybody for your support and I do hope you will support this parish too. There are several things that you can do here. There is a school that we run uh, that requires uh, help because we reach out to the poorest of the poor in this part of the city uh, through principally we run the school also principally through uh, the charitable uh, donations of people. So in case you like to sponsor the education of a child, please do get to me and uh, uh, we will do our best. We have to pay our teachers even in COVID times and I'm glad that we are doing it with a good conscience. Uh, I, as I keep saying, nobody should be struggling during these days. So let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our loving Father, we love you, we bless you, we thank you, we give you glory for all the many blessings that we receive constantly from your hand. Lord, perhaps I have become a person that doesn't see your kindness, that doesn't acknowledge your kindness, that takes for granted everything I have in my home, around me. I may think, Lord, that I don't have much, but even the poorest has something to give. And today, this widow had just two coins and she gave it all. Lord, when I look at my own life here, there's so much I can give away, so much I don't need. But help me to give the best, not old things, but new things. To give it with dignity, to bring life and love to those who are in need. Help us, Lord, all of us, not to be people who preach one thing and in our lives practice another. Today you condemned the scribes, but you commended this nameless widow. We don't know who she is. And like her, there are so many nameless, wonderful people all over the world in this parish who love and support their church. I thank you, I bless you, Lord, for all these people. I thank you for those who here in Gambala Hill have cared for this parish through their kindness, through their work, these last few days, all those who've been coming in and giving of their time, their little widow's might to this parish. Stir the hearts of your people, Lord, so that we may become one church, one family, one body of love and kindness to the whole world. In particular today, I pray for all the widows, those watching, those who may be struggling in their homes. Be with them, Lord, in their loneliness, in their fear, in their worry. Guide, guard and protect them. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do for me, for all that you do for those around me. I love you, Lord. Protect me, protect this church. And may St. Stephen, our patron, bless us. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One last thing before I sign off. Many of you have been asking me, when are we going to start the online Mass? Do give us some time. It involves um, a lot of uh, technical um, uh, adjustments to be made. And uh, we're looking at an appropriate place, principally because this is a very, very large church. And so we're looking for an appropriate place within this house where we could celebrate the Eucharist with the dignity that the Eucharist needs to be celebrated with. So I thank you for your patience and kindness and we will be with you shortly. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so that you can get the notifications. God bless you everybody. Have a blessed day.